name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the characteristics of a living organism is growth. Growth is a silent process recognized by looking backwards. And growth encompasses emotional, psychological, and spiritual aspects of human life. And today's readings are about the growth of our relationship with God. In our first reading, Ezekiel addressed those Jews who were in exile in Babylon with words of hope. He assures them that their ruler is God himself and that God will take a tender shoot from the topmost branch of a cedar tree and plant it on the summit of Mount Zion, a holy mountain. Now the cedar tree is an image of the kingdom of the revered kingdom of David. So Ezekiel's message to those exiles in Babylon is that a descendant of David would also grow a kingdom in whose shade and under whose protection both Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, would live and prosper. Well, St. Mark records Jesus' parables comparing the growth of the kingdom of God to a farmer sowing seed and to the growth of a mustard bush. The farmer prepares the ground, sows the seed, and trusts that the seed will grow. He doesn't rush out every night measuring the rate of growth, but waits until the harvest when he will in fact put the sickle into the field and reap the harvest. And at that point in another parable, we're told that the, weed, the weeds and the harvest grain will be separated. So this message given by Jesus is to his disciples. He's telling them that in their ministry, they should teach the good news of God's salvation and trust him to grow his harvest. What they have to do is preach the word, deliver the message. And then the second parable was the mustard seed. Well, the mustard seed is not the smallest of seeds, but it's pretty small. But it grows into a bush large enough for birds to nest in its branches and to shelter in its shade. So once again, the message to the church is that we must not be disheartened by poor responses to the gospel or when we face trials and persecutions. Our task is to sow the seed and nurture the growth that God produces. Well, in his rather long poem, The Wasteland, which was published in 1922, T.S. Eliot predicts the collapse of Western culture due to a breakdown of morality and the removal of any spirituality 
from human relationships, especially sexual ones. He depicts the world as one filled with stony rubbish and dead trees that give no shade. It's a world that is being dumbed down by atheism, drugs and general laziness because people have given up caring about anything or anyone. And Eliot's prophetic predictions resonate with Arnold Tongby's belief that civilizations die from suicide, not by murder. They are weakened from the inside out. Well, the culture founded on the Judeo-Christian faith, as we live it at this time, may be showing signs of collapse. But Eliot also believes that the church will survive and be the guardian of that culture in the West through a new monastic movement just as St. Benedict created communities in the 5th century when the Roman Empire was collapsing because of the deep imprint of paganism on the Roman mind and culture. Now, ironically, it was Pope Benedict XVI who says that out of our crisis at this time, a smaller, more faithful church will emerge. It will be comprised of small groups of committed, well-informed spiritual disciples who are content to live simple, uncluttered lives. Now, belonging to such creative minorities in our era may be an option for some people, but not for all. Alongside them, and spawning new ones, the, re uh, the reclaiming of Western culture by the Catholic faith must emerge from those who remain in the cut and thrusts of the world, but who refuse to be tainted by the ways of the world. It was G.K. Chesterton who pointed out that this happened at the end of the Dark Ages, following the collapse of the Roman Empire. It was the Christian faithful, he said, who stood firm, destroyed paganism, and enabled a cleansing and renewing of the Western world to occur by presenting it with a new way to understand life and to encounter God. It is perhaps no accident that the ordinariats were called into being by Pope Benedict. The English Catholic tradition, which we share, has classical richness, balance, and spirituality that is pastoral and faithful to the teaching of the Church through the ages. Now, as the Church weathers the storm of these current times, and the storm will get worse, the ordinariates have a significant role to play in being a stake in the ground for those faithful who are seeking 
to deep their relationship with God while remaining true to the faith handed to us by the apostles and successors. We have just celebrated our sixth birthday in Australia. But we must not be disheartened by the relatively small numbers at this stage. What matters is our faithfulness. The harvest and the judgment belongs to God. If you've enjoyed this video, it would help us out greatly if you could like and or subscribe. Thank you.